What powered most of the Royal Navy ships? What powered almost all the ships in the world? Heat. Coal. Coal. Who's got where coal yeah. comes from? Yeah, heat. I think ships. Eh, doesn't work for the coal. Eventually it becomes coal. Coal's really inefficient, really heavy. Your range is really short. The Royal Navy made the switch to oil. The problem is how much oil was in Britain? None. Though. At that time, none. All they got is peat. Huh? All they got is peat. And peat doesn't burn well. I'm just wanted to say peat, and Charles, yeah. you know what that is. Is it peat back to peat? If not, I hope. Hashtag bring back to peat. I guess that's what we need to There's oil up here, but they haven't found that yet. Yeah. I think the circle is the only the corner of the room. Now, wait a sec. Let's get back to this. Oil? Why is this a big deal? If the Royal Navy needs oil, Britain's an island. They don't have a big army. They know war might be coming against the most powerful land army in the world. What country? Germany. Yeah, that we just talked about right here. They need oil. Where's their oil? In the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire, like this place where they're going to make called, you might have heard of it, Iraq. Oh, yeah. They need oil for their navy. So don't, it wasn't at first, hey, let's get oil for cars, because they never dreamed how much, how, um, what a big deal cars would come for now. And planes were brand new, but the navy they understood. The U.S. had lots of oil. So the U.S. ships were actually already converting, but the British needed it. And so they had an alpha vested interest in that. Also, U.S. oil companies, Standard Oil, some people, and stuff like that. But that's why I put here. So Britain is there, controlling that. And they bribed the this, this Shah of Iran and got money. So World War I began. We know about World War I, right? What year did World War I began? 1914. So they're fighting in the Mideast. The Ottoman Empire is there. Turn out the Ottoman Empire didn't collapse the way they thought. They just soon it roll up. No, they fought much better than anyone dreamed despite all their problems. And so here's the Ottoman Empire. They knew all these groups wanted independence. In Egypt had already been taken by the British, but they wanted. And there was an Arab rebellion. They were trying to convince Arabs to rebel against the Ottoman Turks. Arabs are everybody from Syria down to Yemen are Arabs. There's sounds. Everybody who lives here is a sound. The McMahon letter is a secret letter to Arabs telling them they would get independence. You fight against the Ottomans. Everyone see that? You'll get independence. What? 100%. Have you heard of Lawrence of Arabia, T.E. Lawrence, and they would fight? It's an incredible story. And the whole time the Europeans were planning on splitting it up between themselves. You think there'll be resentment down the road? Massive amounts. And this will go all the way across from Afghanistan to Turkey. Then in 1917, did anybody know what the Balfour Declaration was? Wasn't it the Declaration of the the Ottoman Empire is not involved. This was done by the British. But it's about the Ottoman Empire. Anyone know? Has anyone ever heard of something? It was a movement at that time, like a group of people that had been spread throughout Europe, forcibly by the Romans as a group age, called Zionism. Mm -hmm. yeah. What's Zionism? Nazism. No. 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 It's almost the exact opposite uh, establishment of a state. Of a state. A state for Jews with Zionism. And they thought about, hey, why don't we go to, actually there's talk about Uganda. They could somehow move, the, I don't know, where move people live in Uganda out in the wild with a Zionist state there, or maybe in parts of Argentina. But where do they want to go? The part of the Ottoman Empire the world. And that, this Western city, if you might remember the diaspora, we talked about, yeah, yep. picked up by the Romans in 66 AD. So, the Balfour Declaration said this, a secret agreement with the Jews, the Jewish leaders of Zionism, Zionist leaders that said, we'll help you get a state. We'll help you get a nation. Who they'd already promised that land to? 
Arabs. Nothing you see here, move on. Who else have they really promised it to? The British and French. The British are going to take this, and the French will take Syria. They've already decided. Do you see the problem here? You have all these promises and broken promises and lies. What would you believe? Bring that seller treaty out. Yes. I, I would agree, obviously. Yeah. 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 And that's where you get this whole movement of we have been mistreated and cheated and robbed. And people seeing that might give a lot of credibility. So, by the way, not a big deal, huh? So the war ended. I already told you what happened, right? Did the Balfour Declaration happen? No. They didn't. And Israel or Israel would be created by by Zionists were going to come in there and literally take it after World War II. They're going to take it. Nobody involved in a terrorist war against the British who colonized it. So, did the McMahon letter happen? Not really. They made up a, a kingdom called Iraq and gave it to a British proposed monarch without, for oil. They just made up Iraq. They made up uh, Syria and Lebanon. By the way, Lebanon was going to be for the Melodic uh, Christians who lived there. And Palestine was originally too um, big, Palestine, and they said that's too big to administer. So they said Palestine, and then the other side, they just made up this name called Jordan. The British just made it up. What about the rest? Eh, it's desert. We'll let them fight out. The British will keep Kuwait. They made Kuwait in 1999. Um, we'll take Yemen because it's important, and that's it. And so do you see a problem down the road? There's a lot of resentment. So it's the British war. Hmm? Everything you can blame on the British, except for the parts you can't. And so with that, what happened in 1920? The reason I put this down is there were a lot of terrorist attacks. This was a wave of terrorism in something called um, there's actually a red scare. And 1920 was one of the biggest terrorist attacks on the soil of the United States. It was a bombing outside of Wall Street. Did anyone see that? Why did I put that there? No, it doesn't directly rate except for the fact that there's been a lot of terrorism. We don't know who did. We could guess. Killed and wounded over 150 people. Anybody want to guess? Okay. Who was committing acts of terrorists all over in the 1920 war? Anarchists. There's almost certainly an anarchist. It was like their last gas. Anarchism was in the war. It was an anarchist attack. So, let's move on. Do we get that? Yeah. Oh, about 150 people were killed in the movie. And right outside of Wall Street, right outside of the stock, U.S. stock exchange. So, after World War II, oh, I totally forgot to put one in here. Let me just tell you a quick story. Very first story. After World War II, all these places like Syria, which was a French colony, Lebanon, Palestine, Jordan, they all wanted their independence. Iraq would... Um, Iraq would have the British supported kings in 1958, but the rest of it would all win their independence in 46, 47, 48. Syria won their independence in 48. And they were going to be taken over by a homegrown democracy. Syria, a homegrown democracy. What do I mean by homegrown? It's created within the country. And when I mean a democracy, I mean a democratic republic. They're going to pick their leaders. They have a parliamentary system set up. The only problem was who was in the parliament? Generals. Socialists. So who helped overthrow that government because of the dictatorship? CIA. Free CIA. Oh. The CIA didn't exist um, yet when they started doing this. Literally, it was just created. British, French, and the remnants of Army and Navy intelligence in World War II. They overthrew a democracy in Syria. By the way, would this have any repercussions down the road? No, uh, nothing to see here. Do you remember when I told you the four things that Al Qaeda said they attacked? One of them was what kind of governments would, would the United States support? 
including overthrowing democracies. But the biggie, and the last thing I'll tell you, 1954. Remember they have this deal with the oil up here? Iran wanted the money for the oil. And they nationalized the oil. A homegrown democracy in Iran. Some of you already know this story. They nationalized the oil. Britain wanted them out. Britain wanted their money back. As Britain said, they actually said, we stole it fair and square. Well, the United States, under President Truman, no, there ain't going to do that. But Eisenhower was convinced that by nationalizing, there are a bunch of what? Pinkos. Communists and the Cold War had begun. The CIA engineered it over through the government in Iran. And what did they replace it with? A brutal monarchy, dick slash dictatorship under the Shah. And this is going to lead, and it's, I can't even calculate how many things are going to come out of this. Everything is going to come out of this, and people still talk about it in the movies. They still talk about it all the time. You cannot trust the United States. In fact, I was actually shocked that Iran did a nuclear deal with under the Obama administration and then agreed to come back after President Trump ripped it up. I cannot believe they did it because they're like, you can't trust the United States. They said they were, they were the friends of democracy, then they overthrew us in 53. They all know that. Well, some of you probably remember that, maybe from class. Did we get that class last year? Yeah. I talked about it in my class. I don't know if anybody else said, we'll finish more of this tomorrow. But some of this you'll go. Leave my presence. You know what it's for? Let me get down. It's inside there, Mike. You speak to the So my wife is going to text me from beautiful Seattle. It's nothing but just purchases. <laughs> she went to Starbucks. I guess there's a Starbucks in Seattle. I thought there were only a thousand. I thought that was a bunch of flakes. Huh? Huh? Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's weird. It is. But it's fun. It just it's very touristy. But it's fun. John, has you have been there? Why is she done there? Huh? Why not? Huh? I know some of you are thinking to get away from me, but actually, no, it's just that she's there. Um, got her friends from all over there. That's good. I'm glad you could go. And they're going to a hockey game tonight. The crack at Oh, yeah, so the Seattle team just got a new hockey team. Huh? They just got a new hockey team, the Kraken. Yeah, the new team. She's, she's not really a follower of the NHL, but I guess I've never been to a professional yeah, hockey game. I heard they're, I heard they're amazing. Yeah, I heard they're really fun. Anyway, I, yeah. Even if you don't know anything about hockey, and the speed. Oh, yeah. TV doesn't do it justice. That's why I've never been to 